Coming up, what do an MSI Raider, an SSD in a box, and an MSI Titan have in common? Answer, they're all things you'll see today. It's Tech Time on B-Squared, and it all starts right now. So it's been a while since we just sat and talked one-on-one, -on -one, and I gotta admit, I've kinda missed it, but every once in a while, it's nice to just mix things up, and in this case, kinda go back to our roots, because we haven't done anything really technical in a while. The last thing I did that really was technical was the review of the MSI Titan that I did, and before that, the unboxing of the MSI Raider that I bought back at Christmas. Both of those kinda tie into what we're doing today, which is to install this SSD, this new NVMe 4TB SSD into my Raider and to take the 2TB SSD that I already had and try to install it in the Titan. But before we get into what happened today, let's go back in time a little bit. So you'll recall that back in December, I bought the MSI Raider and it was a great system and I realize I haven't really done a review on it since then. but. The Raider has held up surprisingly well, or maybe not surprisingly well, considering MSI's reputation. And um, everything that I've thrown at it since the day I bought it, it's handled fairly well. There are a few quirks to it, but like the Titan before it, whenever something weird does happen, a CMOS reset is usually the answer. And with the Titan, it was easy to do a CMOS reset, because all you had to do was pull the power cord, hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds, then plug the power cable back in and you're good to go. With the Raider, it has a really small port on the bottom of the unit with a reset button at the bottom of it. And in order to get to it, you have to have a paper clip. Now, getting paper clips are e easy peasy and, and they're a dime a dozen. But it was just something that caught me by surprise. I've got a multi-tool that has one of those probes that you can, uh, that you can do things like that with, but uh, it turns out that the the probe on this one was too thick. So when I say paperclip, I mean paperclip. So, but at any rate, so the Raider came with an onboard SSD and it had a slot for another one. So when I realized that the SSD that it came with wasn't that big, I decided that the right thing to do would be to get an SSD to add to it since there was an open slot. So. The one that I got was a Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte PCIe Generation 4x4 NVMe Gaming Internal Solid State Drive, try saying that 10 times fast, from Best Buy. And it's, what can I say? I was lured by the fact that the description had the word gaming in it. And the specs as advertised are fairly impressive. So you've got a maximum transfer rate of 7,100 megabytes per second. And this drive, I will say, has absolutely outclassed every other drive that I've ever owned. I've got a few other SSDs that I use. Some of them are externals, some of them are internals that I'm treating as externals connected via USB and so on and so forth. But this one, I gotta say, lives up to what you would expect from a gaming drive. It's been fast, it's been reliable, and the only problem is I ran out of space. If you know anything about me, you know that I am a cyber pack rat and I never press delete on anything. Well, I press delete on clips from, like when I'm shooting episodes of B Squared, I press delete on clips that make me look like an idiot, but you know, everything else I keep. So there's a lot of stuff and I've said it before, Surrounding me in this room are more hard drives than I can count. And I can tell you because I can only count up to like three. There's more than three. Uh, there's a bunch of them behind my main system. There's three of them that are connected via USB to the front panel. Uh, I've got a bunch of them over here connected to the laptop. So I've got storage for pretty much every occasion. And every drive has something different. So if you didn't know that I was uh, a little bit of a hoarder when it comes to data, now you know. But the thing is, when I take the Titan out and do work on the road, I need a lot of files with me to, you know, be able to do pretty much anything I need to do right there afield. So I had been looking at getting a larger NVMe SSD for it for a while. And for the longest time, I was turned away by the high prices. Because let's be honest, when you're talking about SSDs, they ain't cheap. 
and the more space you get, just like on a regular hard drive, the more expensive the unit. But the fact that I had slimmed down pretty much everything on this drive and it was still saying, help, I'm almost full, was the impetus for me to actually invest in a new one. So I looked around for a while and the one that I settled on was the Seagate Fire Cuda 530, four terabytes PCIe, Gen 4 times four, NVMe 1.4 3D TLC internal solid state drive. Dry say in that 10 times fast. Uh, this time from Newegg. And just to look at some of the specs on it, um, what made me what made me settle on this one was that it is billed as the fastest fire CUDA ever with a maximum transfer rate of 7300 megabits per, megabytes per second which is 200 megabits faster than the previous drive so obviously if you're going to be dealing with more data you don't want to go back on transfer speed or at least i don't so this one according to newegg was designed for the ps5 so my logic was if something is designed to work with a game console it's going to be built to last so that said i was also glad to see that just in case of emergency this one also came with data recovery services in the plan so uh, i like that so just diving into some of the technical specs according to newegg uh, i scrolled right past them uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. memory components 3d tlc uh, maximum sequential read up to 7300 megabytes per second, maximum sequential write up to 6900 megabits per second, 4 kilobytes random read up to 1 million IOPS, 4K, uh, 4 kilobytes random write also up to 1 million IOPS, heat sync, it didn't come with a heat sync, but I figure if a drive is meant for for internal use and it doesn't come with a heat sink it probably means the unit itself is built to is built to last even as such so i wasn't really worried about that but all the same i'm glad that data recovery service is included in the purchase price so so long story short i invested in a new drive that is bigger faster and better than the old one and it's a seagate drive i know people out there feel how they feel about seagates but I've used Seagates on and off for years, and I've never really had a problem, so I'm not terribly worried, but uh, I was glad that this one came highly rated on Newegg. So with that, let's talk about what actually happened when I went to do the upgrade and install. So first thing on the agenda was to install the new SSD into the Raider and remove the old drive. Wait a minute, strike that, reverse it. Remove old drive first, then install new one. That's the order of operations when you're doing an upgrade. So if you've ever upgraded the internal components of a laptop, realistically, the Raider is no different. You unscrew the screws and pull off the bottom plate, remove old drive, insert new drive. Really not that hard. When you flip the Raider over, there's a ton of screws. And when I did this, I took my time because let's be real, it's a $4,300 gaming laptop. And the last thing I wanted to do was cause damage. But I'm not going to make you guys sit through the entire process of unscrewing the screws. So with that said, cue the montage music. So with the back plate off, the first thing I did was locate the two SSDs that are there, the one that it came with and the one that I upgraded. And a word to the wise, when you're doing something like this, it's a good idea to always kind of make a mental note of which drive is which, because to just look at them, they're identical. And when you fail to do that, this is what happens. What I did was I pulled the OEM drive by mistake. In other words, the one that had the operating system on it. And when I installed the Samsung Fire CUDA, uh, the computer had no operating system. And at first I thought that maybe there was a problem and I'd mess something up. But when I looked at the boot settings in the BIOS, it saw the Samsung drive and the, uh, it saw the, the Samsung that I had 
bought before the 980, as well as the Fire Cuda, and that's what told me that, oops, you removed the wrong one. So I had to go back, pull out all the screws, pull the, the back plate or the bottom plate off again, do some musical hard drives to get them in the right configuration. I put the original drive back where it started and I just used the second slot for the new Fire Cuda because, you know, if it works the way it was, why mess with success? So after that, I powered the, the Raider back on. And this is the thing. At first, Windows isn't going to pick it up, but don't panic. All you have to do is open Disk Manager, and it should prompt you as to whether you want an MBR or a GUID partition table. Modern drives operate better with GUIDs. MBR is there for legacy drives that maybe you salvaged from the late 90s or early 2000s. But for this one, I went with a GUID partition, and it showed unallocated space. So from there, all you got to do, create a new simple volume, and voila, which means, and then it happens. So... After that, I had a perfectly usable drive, easy peasy, ready to be filled up with all sorts of useful and, knowing me, useless data. So we'll put that aside for now, and let's talk about what happened with the Titan. Now the Titan, as you may recall from the review that I did a while back, was designed to be easily user upgradable. And I'd been saying forever that I bought this system precisely because it was meant to be easily upgradable, but I'd never actually done anything with it. Well, today we saw just how easy it is to do upgrades with this system, and it's exactly as easy as they always said it was. So you start the same way. You bring the Titan into your workspace, you flip it over, but this time, unlike the Raider, we're not going to pull out all the hundreds of screws on it. There are exactly two that you have to remove, and this is this is why. Remember from my review that all the components that you might need to upgrade are under that top panel that has the, the dragon on it. Well, to remove that panel, you actually have to remove some screws on the bottom of the unit. There's two. So all you have to do is remove screw number one, remove screw number two, and they have a, they have a little icon next to them that at first might look like maybe a battery icon, but nope, it's telling you that these are the two you have to remove for the top panel. So you pull those out, you set them carefully aside, then you flip the unit back over and you apply a little bit of pressure to the plate, a rightward pressure to the plate, and it slides right off. And that's really all there is to it. All your components are laid bare right there. You have your existing drives. In this, in this case, my system has two NVMe SSDs already that it came with. Let me say that again. These are the same two SSDs that the unit shipped with back in 2015. And it is, oh my, it is half past 2022. So that means these SSDs have lasted faithfully for seven straight years. I've said it before, but to me, that is a very impressive performance record. And in this unit, I also got it with a single two terabyte traditional mechanical hard drive, which is over, uh, which is over past an empty slot. And it is that empty slot where we're going to put the Samsung that we pulled out of the Raider. And yes, I'm sure that this was the right one. So again, it's not that tough. There's a screw at the top, or there was a screw at the top of the slot, and all I had to do was find a screwdriver Phillips head that was small enough to fit into that tiny little plus sign there, but unscrewed it, slid the drive in. At now, at first, the drive didn't want to slide in all the way, and I figured, you know what? It's a brand new drive, and it's an ancient slot that's never been used, so it stands to reason that you might have to finesse it just a little bit, and I did, and I was very gentle to avoid breaking anything, and... After a couple of minutes, I managed to get the drive fully seated. I replaced the screw, replaced the faceplate, re-screwed the screws on the bottom, and powered on the Titan. Now this time around, the BIOS wasn't even detecting the SSD, so I did a few diagnostic steps, I reseated the drive, and so on and so forth, and it still wasn't picking it up, but I know the system realized it was there because I could feel that the drive had heated up a little bit. So I did some research, and it turns out that this drive is not compatible with the infrastructure of the Titan. It, I guess the Titan was set up to use a SATA interface, whereas this was a PCIe drive. So it's not the first critical research failure that I've ever had, but 
it is the latest. So, so that's two research failures on this one procedure. Uh, I forgot which drive was in what slot on the radar, and I didn't think to look beforehand to make sure that this new drive could fully interface with the old processor and infrastructure. So I have a two terabyte NVMe SSD that I'm not quite sure what to do with, but I will say MSI, if you make another system like the Raider, build in a third SSD slot if you can, because it would have been really nice to have both a two terabyte SSD and a four terabyte SSD in the Raider for, I don't know, for a rainy day, but it would have been nice just the same. Now, full disclosure, I have been skeptical of gaming hardware for years, and the reason is I always thought that gaming hardware would only be good for gaming, hence the name, and that it wouldn't necessarily handle things like video equally well. But the past six months of working with the Raider have changed my mind on that. And the thing is, the Raider has actually eclipsed my desktop PC over here as my, not my primary video editing platform, but my primary video export platform. And it, it's nice to have a system of equal power to my desktop that can export video while I'm continuing to work on my desktop. It's, it's nice to be able to multitask like that. And for any time that I need to render something out like a motion graphic or anything, and my two computers, my two main computers are busy, I've still got the Titan to handle things that are, you know, maybe a little lighter, but it, uh, you know, it still handles things pretty well. So that's my workflow. And I can also say that even though it is a laptop built for gaming, the Raider has handled everything that I've thrown at it. It's handled productivity through web browsers. It's handled things done through InDesign. It's handled After Effects and Premiere. Uh, it handles, here's the key. Even though there isn't a lot of screen real estate, it <laughs> that's a complaint of mine and will always be a complaint of mine. The Raider has continued to handle Adobe Illustrator quite well. And I used to say, I used to say that I loathed Illustrator because for such a Sim simplistic looking program, it tended to lag a lot because it depended on the GPUs and I haven't always worked on systems with powerful enough GPUs, but the Raider handles Illustrator like nobody's business. So you do have to have a good mouse to be able to uh, sketch things out in Illustrator, but that's another problem. Speaking for myself, I have a graphics tablet, which I may review at some point in the future. Uh, shout out to our friends at, at Wacom or Wacom or however you pronounce it. Um, they make an excellent product and the stylus is always right here next to me sitting under my monitor. It's in its own little inkwell base, whatever you want to call it. But uh, I love that and it works really well with Windows 10. It works really well with Windows 11 as far as I can tell. So I've, I've got products for just about every occasion. But at any rate, I just wanted to share this with you so you could see how easy the Raider is to upgrade, how easy the Titan is to upgrade, and please learn from my mistakes. Always do your research ahead of time because if I had, if I had thought to do my homework before I started this process, uh, I might have saved myself about half an hour, but you know, live and learn. And if you can't make mistakes, are you really doing technology to begin with? So. So there you have it. That's really all I had for you. This is one of our shorter episodes, but you know, short, sweet, and fun. So till next time, this is Brandon Bridges reminding you the best way to be is B squared. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Call What Happened an on-air technical difficulty.